starts. I hope, oof. I mean, if you're not used to wearing two pairs of glasses, can we even be friends? I'm not sure, but, and I have contacts in, which is even the better part of all this. Um, what do I need to tell you guys about it? Oh my God, wish me luck. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. I haven't done anything in this backyard since our neighbor's goat was attacked by our other neighbor's dog. So wish me luck that there's nothing traumatic that happens today. It's gonna be in the 80s. I told you guys, I was at a friend's shearing day last weekend, and, or sorry, two weeks ago, and she gave me some fleece it is unskirted, it's like straight off the sheep. So it's unskirted, I am gonna skirt it first and then I'm gonna wash it. I'll probably do a little sampling too and I think my plan is gonna be to get it all spun during the tour. Tour de Fleece is what I'm referring to. It starts July 1st. We have a team on Ravelry. I will put a link to the team thread below. There's also in the first post of that thread a little, um, if you're new to Ravelry, here's some info that might help you enjoy, may or may not help you enjoy the experience more. There's a lot of people who haven't used it or haven't used it for like groups and forums and that kind of thing. So I've been telling you guys I'm embarrassed about my backyard, but I am like, I would say half done out here. There's been stuff I've had to do out in the front, big stuff as well so i'm feeling like i'm starting to catch up and i feel better about it i'll show you a little bit of it um there's also dirt on me because this morning i took the cover off the pool not the big cover just the solar cover mr french is vacuuming it right now that's our pool vacuum can you see him i don't know if you can see him or not i can't tell and um i'm gonna go in it later let's get set up so the first thing i need to do is i'm gonna hang up the drying um I don't know if you'd call it a rack. It's like a hang, I guess it's a hanging drying rack and it works great. We are lucky, I'll show you, because when we moved into this house, there was already this um, post that goes down into the ground. It's super sturdy. It had one of those macrame egg shaped little like chairs hanging from it. So I hang it from this. So let's get set up and then we will get to the skirting. So it's now hung up. It's like the perfect height, Mr. Louie, for this. And it gives me all these shelves to put fleece on and let it dry. There's no breeze. If it's really windy, sometimes I don't wanna use it because there's like an opening here. So if it's gonna sway back and forth all over, the fleece can fall out. But there's like very little breeze today. This is half about of her BFL fleece. Um, if you haven't skirted before, I've gotten free and good deal fleeces before, but you always have to put some work in, which is totally fair. I don't know if you guys can see this from here, but it's really, really pretty. It's very greasy and um, we're just gonna basically go through it. So anything I'm trying to take out, is if it's felted, if it has really excessive VM, sometimes around the neck they get that. There is no neck in this piece. She took the blanket off first, which is like just the back, and then bagged it up and then did the rest of the sheep. So, but there is probably some poop around the back and some bridge wool that is felted. So I'm just gonna go through it. And then as I pull stuff off that I wanna keep, I'll be shaking it over this sheet to get off second cuts and any BM that will just fall out. So we're gonna give it a shot. This does not have tons of VM in it. It has some, but not tons. Oh, and I will be taking anything that I skirt off of this, I will be throwing in my garden for mulch.
put it in the bag. You can see this is gross now. So this is, I thought I'd just show you guys, one of the characteristics of the BFL. So they call this pearls, look how much dirt is on me. <laughs> they call this pearls in the fleece, the way it crimps. And it's a very long staple. So it's a really nice example. And then I'm gonna, I did not snap test this one. Let's try it. Oh, it's nice and sound. One down, two to go. I think we're gonna do this one next. This one is a Dorset Jacob um, cross. And honestly, I've wanted to try some wool from this sheep for a while. So I'm very grateful she gave me some. It should be interesting. plastic bag. Okay, so this one's going in here. Okay, again, let me throw this in the mulch. I'm going to go dump the sheet because I don't want to transfer dirt from one onto the other and then just have to shake it out again. Okay, last skirting and then I'm going to jump in the pool and then we'll wash. All right, so this is the last one. It is going to be really big. It is from a Romney sheep and she had a huge fleece, but look at this. Yay! Um, I just went in and got my heat resistant gloves because I'm going to start washing. But before I do anything where I need these, I'm going to do a cold water soak and I'm going to start with the Romney. In case you guys don't remember, we have an outdoor shower mainly so you can like rinse off if you're working out here or before you go in the pool. I'm just going to fill this for the soak with like lukewarm water pretty much up to the top and I'm going to put fleece in it like up to here. So it'll be a pretty good amount of fleece in the bottom of this. All right, so this is like a, basically what I would call like a cool room temperature. It's actually cooler than the air out here. And I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of this in here. Submerge it and let it soak for like half an hour and I am gonna go swimming. That's what the towel was for. So you can tell, oh, I just felt a burr. Just pulled a big burr out of there. It happens, man. So you can tell that that will dislodge a lot of dirt. It won't really melt the lanolin because it's not hot enough, but I'm gonna let this sit for about half hour, take a dip, and we'll be back. So some of you guys have seen this before. John cut out for me the bottom of this five gallon bucket and I use a laundry bag in it for like a colander. So I'm gonna drain that, that wool that was just soaking in the cold water now. So this water is not bad to put on your grass, but the hot, hot water you're gonna use later is don't put that anywhere that you don't want to kill what is growing. But if you do have like concrete with cracks or whatever, it's a great place to kill the weeds and the cracks. Now I'm gonna go fill this up with super hot water. Okay, this is where our outdoor shower is. I brought my Dawn out. I am going to squirt it till the water's light blue. 
that looks good. If I had to guess, I'd guess it's about a quarter to a third of a cup. Um, but I don't measure it ever. But you can see that water is blue in the sunshine. If the fleece is extremely dirty, I will add about a half a scoop of Arm & Hammer laundry detergent powdered. This fleece is not extremely dirty, so I'm not going to do that. But just kind of an FYI in case you encounter one that's extremely dirty. Okay, so here is my wool. You can see it's already looking cleaner just from that cold water soak with no soap. And I also have my heat resistant glove. John bought them for me because I kept saying, ooh, ah, while I was using regular rubber gloves, but you can use regular ones. It's already submerging itself, but I'm gonna just tuck it underneath. And this is just really heavy. I'm gonna move it as little as possible. But you can see, now, see how it's like cloudy? That means the lanolin is melting off as well as some of the dirt. So I'm gonna leave this for 20 minutes. I actually brought my Kindle outside with me, so I'm gonna just sit out here and read for 20 minutes and set myself a timer and come back and dump it. You ready? Oh no! Hang on. All right, this is the first wash. It is heavy. Oh, there's a grasshopper in here. I don't want to kill that either. Come on, buddy. Nope, you can't stay in. You gotta get out. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go fill this up for the second wash and then we can rinse. Woohoo! Generally for the rinses, I only do about 10 minutes. I don't think more time gets rid of more silk. I'm gonna take some of this out now. Uh, they are all dry. I brought them in last night. Where the heck is the opening? There we go thought I would show you guys. This is kind of like what it looks like after it's washed. This is normal. I know on Instagram and stuff you've seen pictures of things that look pristine right out of the washing water. That is not actually normal and I think it's deceiving for a lot of us. This is pretty normal. You can still see small pieces of hay, all kinds of stuff in there. Here's some of the BFL. It is really pretty, and actually this looks pretty normal too. It's gorgeous. And let me get out some of the blend, the cross. This is the Jacob Dorset cross. It is also very normal looking, a little bit of straw, see this? But a lot of what was in here did wash out. And I expect more of it to fall out as I process. So I thought today I would process just a tiny sample of each because one thing I want to do is spin all these kind of first up or second up in the Tour de Fleece. The only reason they might be second up is because I am going to finish the big kind of taupe and gray grayish project I'm working on. But I'm trying to finish that before the tour starts. So I'm just gonna sample up a little bit of each of these. I have my hand tools out only, so Flicker. Those are bigger indigo hound combs. I also have Valkyrie super fine combs, but I don't really need those for any of these. And then my Howard hand cards, I'm not gonna, you know, get drag out the big drum carter and stuff. And I really wanna sit out in the yard. We spent almost the whole day in the car yesterday and in my dad's house. And it's beautiful today. I think right now, although that could change, I think it's gonna be flick, comb, hand cards. But let's just see how it goes. 
Before I start, I thought I'd just show you. I have been spinning this Cormo that I, I just flicked out these locks. That's all I used, a flicker brush for them. They're turning out so gorgeous. Um, and I just wanted to finish up this bobbin before I put it away and put a new bobbin on to do the sampling. But it's turning out so nice. I just had to show you it. Okay, let's get on to the others. I'm just gonna start out with a little handful of the Romney. There's a couple burrs in here. That's all this is, is just a burr from, you know, plant seeds. So I'm gonna just take a few locks at a time and flick them. They're pretty easy to separate by the tips. My experience has been that flicking or combing is the best way to get rid of that VM that just sticks in there. <laughs> so, this is what you get. You just get this really beautiful, fluffy block. This is how much I just flicked and I'm gonna spin. I'm not gonna weigh it, It's I don't wanna go get my scale basically. It's laziness only. And then this is the amount of waste I got for, for this amount of fiber. So you do get some. You know, some of the fibers are short, some just pull out. You just gotta be okay with creating some waste and find some other way to use it that makes you feel okay about it. I like it in my garden. So that's how much waste I have for this. I'm gonna spin it. Well, I don't know if the light is gonna be too much to see this, but it's actually like really pearly. It has a really nice sheen to it. Not exactly a shine, but more of a just glow to it. So I am going to turkey hand ply it. It's my version of an Andean plying bracelet. Let's go. Okay, you gotta see this. So I'm gonna actually film it in the house as well so you can see better, but it is just, it's unbelievably gorgeous and it's softer than I thought it was gonna be. It's actually a little bit silky 
and quite soft. So it's turning out great. I can't wait to get to this for Tour de Fleece now. Okay, so for the BFL, I'm gonna use my um, Indigo Hound regular size combs. I don't remember exactly what they call them. All right, I'm only gonna do this much. Combing takes longer. So I'm gonna grab these the same way I grab those locks by basically like the tips and pull them from the rest and just put, I don't know, it's about a half inch on there. And you don't, I don't like them more than about a third full because it's gonna fluff up a lot. So I'll probably lash on like six little bundles like that. BFL has a pretty long lock, you can see. I might not have caught all those, but it won't matter. Because we'll get them on the next one. All right, so we're gonna just do a few more. This is a really, really pretty fleece. The kind of darker charcoal is just gorgeous, so. You do not have to do, you can lash the tips on if you'd rather, I just like to do it with the butt. So then when you use your other comb, always comb away from yourself and then only just catch the tips a tiny bit. Okay. And make sure you pull them completely apart. You do not have to, you shouldn't have to pull hard, I should say. I was gonna say you don't have to, but you shouldn't have to. You never ever poke these towards yourself. So see how that fluffs like that? It eventually will make it so it wants to come up and catch on the top of the teeth. So if you keep it so you're down lower on the comb, it'll just help you that way. So I'm going to now transfer from this one that's mostly full to this one, and I'm actually gonna keep this one up, and I'm just gonna do this. So um, I'm catching just a little at a time, same thing. As you practice, you will get faster. I don't hand comb a lot. Um, it is something that I really like the, the results of. I just don't do it a ton, so I'm not very fast and I, I'm okay with it. I would just need to put the time into practice to get fast. Okay, so see what's left here? There's very little that's actually like long and the rest of it is ch little chunks and little tangles and things. So I'm gonna pull that out, that's waste. And see this shortcut hanging out? I'm gonna pull that off. Normally those get caught behind the back of a comb anyway, so it's not really a big deal. But, and then I'm just gonna do, the, this is gonna be my last pass, I think. where there isn't much left. Okay, so there's not much left here, you can see again. And you can see on the back, it's just like little tangles and caught up little chunkies. And I'm gonna pull it off. There's also some BM in there, I can feel little pieces of grass. So that's waste. And then this is what I have left. It is really, really pretty and so nice to spin. Three passes is usually enough. There's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, these are so sharp that I don't generally want to spin off the comb unless I have it in the holder.
when you get close to the back, there's always this point where you can see that you're getting like gunk from the back pulling out. So that's when I usually stop. I'm gonna just pull that off and that's waste as well. And then I'll show you, I'm gonna do one more comb full. You always have more waste with combing. This is one little nest, right? And then this is the waste from it. So I would say it's maybe about a third. I'm not, again, I'm not gonna weigh it, but it's a pretty good guess that this is about a, thir a third of the weight of this. So I'm gonna do one more um, comb full and then we'll spin it. Um, like kind of shocked actually this is like 10 times more gorgeous than I even thought it was gonna be and it spun up like butter so I'm going to do the same thing I'm gonna use my andium plying bracelet and ply this as a two ply it spun so fine so easily it's soft and silky it's unbelievable absolutely gorgeous soft and silky unbelievable actually um i'm i'm speechless i wish i had the whole fleece so next we are gonna go ahead and i think i'm gonna hand card this and just let the chips fall i'm a little afraid not enough of the vm will fall out during hand carding but i'm gonna try it anyway So this is just kind of like anchored a little bit into the tips and then I'm just going to pull off a little at a time and the hope is that as you do this it is falling out. Look how much of that's falling out. That's nuts. Okay. I don't know if you'll be able to see my lap but it's covered in dirt. So, we're gonna take this and anchor it and let it go. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Okay, and now I'm gonna switch it because I did not take off what was on this 
um, hand card, so I'm going to switch it and take that off. I'm slow at this too because I just don't hand process very often. And I'd like to be carding off with this hand. Okay. So I'm happy with that and what I have is two cards that look like this. What I'm going to do is put them, do the same thing. So you anchor this loose fluffy part just a little bit on the teeth, the tines, whatever, and then remove it from the other card, okay? And then, I mean, there's multiple ways to do this. I personally like to just take my, co my card, start it, and roll it off. We're making a roll egg, okay? You can also roll it off with the other card like this. Okay. But I like to do it with my hands. I just like to feel it. So I'm gonna do like three of these, um, but we're just gonna spin the first one right now. All right, here is the last one. It's very squishy, um, really bouncy, exactly what I would expect from a down breed. And I'm just really happy. This is the Romney and I'm gonna come in, like I said, I'm gonna come in very, very close. It is so pretty. Um, there's a tiny bit of VM left. I do not mind that. Some people can't stand any, but I don't mind a little bit. So I just think it turned out gorgeous. It's got such a pretty sheen to it. Uh, I will be spinning this one first in the tour. And then here's the BFL. I wish, I wish you could feel it. It's in the sunshine right now. It's actually uh, photographing a little lighter because of the reflection of the light, but it is so squishy and soft. I, I kind of can't believe it. I've actually tried spinning and processing BFL twice before from the same, a sheep from the same flock. She bought this sheep from a flock where, you know, I had a fleece from the same owner once before, and this one is just so much nicer. I did not expect it to be this much better and it's a million times better. So, and it just spun up so beautifully. I can't wait. And I will be combing the rest of this. I feel like it was the right choice just for the length and then also the fineness of it. It just turned out so, so good. And last, um, this is the really the one that I wanted to try just because it's unusual and the breed is more unusual and I love down breeds. I love spinning them. I just love it. I don't make traditional roll eggs that often, so also that was really fun for me, and I think I'll probably do a little bit more of it. I used to find it so slow, but it doesn't feel feel as slow as it used to, or at least it didn't this time. So it turned out gorgeous. It is super smushy, you can see. Super, super smushy, um, just very down breed-like, but the Jacob, you know, changed the colors. It added some different shades of gray and black, and it's just gorgeous would make a great sweater and it's softer than I thought it would be too. So it's really nice. I hope this got some of you excited to get prepped for Tour de Fleece. I'm getting excited actually. Tour, or sorry, not Tour de Sock. Super Sock World Championship is also going on. So that's gonna be interesting for me. <laughs> 
I'm starting to get excited. Can you tell? How could I not? I mean, come on. So I hope you have a great week. Friday I will be doing a live bat making, this time for sure. I had some stomach trouble last week and I just was like, I I don't think I can do that. I don't think I can stand in front of my drum carter for, you know, an hour, hour and a half because I didn't feel well. But I feel fine now. I wish we could do it outside, but you guys know how I feel about the breezes blowing across the microphones. It just doesn't work for me. So we're gonna do it in the house on Friday. 3 o'clock. I'll see you there, I hope, here on this channel. And then Sunday will be live like normal. My visit with my dad was great for Father's Day. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you soon. Thanks. I love you. Bye.